to show you something that it, I'm going to show you more than what this says. I want to show you and, and pull off the covers of how people are becoming religiously deceived. Something about deception. Deception is when you think you're right, but you're wrong, but you think you're right. And, and I want to show you this, and I want, to, I want to deal with this by dealing with a subject that we dealt with this past Wednesday that I just think is so important, and I want to ask you this question because I've heard answers to this question by a lot of powerful people. And, I, and, and you know what happens under grace? You, it's grace. When you get grace, you get truth. And it straightens your impression of God. You now have the right image of who God is. And it challenges the old image you had. The old image that God took my mama or dad. Or, or God caused the wreck. Or God was doing this bad thing to teach me something. Or, you know, God want me to stay broke all my life. Or... Maybe it's God's will for me to be unhappy so that other people... You have the wrong impression of God. You see God as a judge. You see God as someone who's, who's cause of sickness. You see God as someone who took the little kid who died in the car wreck. We, and then we just talk about, you know, well, uh, uh, the Lord works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. It ain't a mystery at all if the word's rightly divided. And that needs to be straight. Now, how did all that happen? What I want to use this illustration, I want you to go to John chapter 9, 31, and just work with me here. I'm going to ask you some questions because I want to provoke your thinking. I don't want to just say this. I want you to think through this process with me. So it's not uh, just a statement I want to make. I want you to think through this process. John chapter 9 and 31. I want you to read verse 31 out loud with me. Ready? Read. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doth Okay, keep that scripture up. I want you to stare at it. And I'm going to ask you a question. Does God answer the prayer of sinners? Yes. yes. All right, who says yes? Raise your hands. Put your hands down. Who says no? Raise your hands. One, I must did pretty good. Two, all right. All right, for those, all of you who raised your hands, how can you say that that's not the truth? Because that's just right, that's what he says. Isn't that what he said? Isn't that what he said? Yes. What, what, what did he say? He said, now, now we know that God heareth not sinners. All right, let me ask you, you do you believe that God hears sinners? Yes. yes. But, but, but it says, you know, don't don't get mad at me. It's in the word. It's in the word. It's in the word. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. And I ask you, do you believe God hears sinners? You're like, yes. Well, wouldn't you be contradicting what the word said? No. Y'all just rebellious, ain't you? <laughs> but it's right there. It says, now we know that God heareth not sinners. And then you've been taught to live by the word. And if it's in the word, then it is what it is because it's in the word. And right there, it's in the word. It's in the scriptures. It's in your Bible, your Bible. It's on the screen. So does God not does he not hear sinners? Yes, yes. See, come on, stick with what you had. Don't let me talk you out of what you... <laughs> Some of y'all, well, now that you put it like that. <laughs> does God hear the prayer of a sinner? Yes. But what does that say? <laughs> so are you contradicting the word? No, no. no. You, you must be, because he says, he, 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 he,
is talking about something else. Well, how am I supposed to know it's talking about something else? Well, I'm just showing you just this one scripture. How am I supposed to know it's talking about something else? It's just that one scripture. It's just that one scripture right there. I showed you the word. That's that one scripture right now. <laughs> what happened? Context declared the application of a scripture. And if you don't understand the context that that one scripture appears in, if you just lift that one scripture out of context and tell me, try to create a doctrine off that one scripture without paying attention to the whole context, you could be spreading a doctrine that's ruining people's lives, that's dominating in a wrong way the way they think, because you're talking about what the Bible say with one line and you hadn't read the whole context. And we've so been so busy talking about, well, I'll tell you what the scripture means, and then you look up the Greek and Hebrew. Then you can look up the Greek and Hebrew all day long and ignore context, right. and it's still wrong. Well, the Greek, the Greek word of, of, of sinner is, I don't care about no Greek. What does the context say in English? I, I ain't Greek. I don't speak Greek. <laughs> That's not wrong with going to look at Greek and Hebrew language, but I'm just saying, I want you to look and see what's been happening here. Let me give you an illustration and then we'll find the context of this, because I agree with you. But I have to show you in context why that is not going to be true. Because I've heard them say, well, you know, God doesn't hear the prayer of sinners. And the only prayer he hears of a sinner is when he repents. I'm thinking, well, if he's going to hear that one prayer, how come he can hear the rest of them? <laughs> Is this a bipolar God y'all talking about? Who is this? <laughs> and that's what the world's like. That's why they look at us like that. We come up with these strange rules for God. Well, and, and, then, and then they talk about sinners. Like, they're no longer, they, how do I explain this? It's like for you to, what they're saying, well, you have to see in context. I can't say that until you see where the word sinner came from. They actually were calling Jesus a sinner because what he did on the Sabbath day. Let me give you an illustration. Let's say I wrote you a letter or oh, you were involved in a conversation and the conversation was about cookies. And, and I said to you, I said, man, I really love cookies. I think they're the greatest creation <laughs> that any chef could have come up with. All right, and I'm talking to you about my love of cookies. I'm talking to you about how awesome cookies are. I even told you uh, my favorite cookie is oatmeal raisin cookies. But then I made this statement. I don't like chocolate chip cookies. They are not to my satisfaction, and I will not partake of them. So you come and lift up that line. I do not like chocolate chip cookies. And then some guy adds to it because he's not reading the context of the conversation. And he says, he don't like cookies. And I'm like, where you get that from? Well, right here. See that? You said you don't like chocolate chip cookies and you would prefer them. They're not satisfied to your taste. Yeah, I said I don't like chocolate chip cookies. But you cannot assume from that one statement that I don't like cookies. So you got to go back and read the whole context of what I was talking about. In fact, I was telling you about how much I love cookies. I ain't told you the cookies I really like. There, there was a, a, a thing on the, the other week. I had a, I had a, a cheat day. I, I like to take a cheat day because it kind of stirs up my leptin level. That's a fat hormone that kind of helps me to continue to burn fat so I don't get stuck at a place, right? And um, Taffy was speaking somewhere, and, and I, I, I went to Netflix and looked at it's this, this new thing called When They See Us, I think that's the name of it. And, and, and when, I, oh, when, I, when I, I sat and I looked at it, and then when it came on television, I thought, well, this is probably going to be short because they don't have any evidence. You know what I'm saying? I've noticed myself there's no physical evidence, no DNA matches. Oh, this, this is absolutely, I mean, something's got to be wrong if you find these guys guilty. And I thought, well, it's going to be, you know, short. So I got me, uh, I think my limited, well, that day was three oatmeal cookies. They had to be small, three small oatmeal cookies. Same, same identical ingredients, but they were small. And so I got the three oatmeal cookies, and I'm eating, oh, it's good. And then it turned out that they, like, pronounced them guilty. 
and I'm thinking, how can they do that? And I'm like, Taffy, she ain't here. I, I, oh. <laughs> and then I kept looking, and then I was getting real bald. You know, the, and then the, the friend that went, he just went. Because he was trying to be a good friend. And they got him hooked in. I'm like, oh, I, I, need, I need to come to some comfort. Oh, God, Jesus. <laughs> and, and wasn't nobody physically there to comfort my emotional thing that I was going through. And I remembered in the cabinet I had a friend that stick it closer than any brother. <laughs> She didn't call him Anna. She called him Anna. Uh, what? No. Well, he took an Anna. Oh, man. And now I reached in there and I'm like, oh, my God, ain't no more. Oh, I'm sat here and ate all this old bag. Tammy, come on. Like, you didn't eat all the old bag. Well, baby, I was looking for you. <laughs> so the context is I like cookies. But you only took out. Chocolate chip cookies, and you made doctrine, you made religion, you added stuff to it, and it wasn't the truth at all. That's the same way men have done this scripture here. Now, let's back up to verse 14 and see what he said. Now, context is not only the information that we missed out on, but it's the it's the attitude and the atmosphere that was being created by the situation. Now, you remember when this guy was born blind and the disciples had the question, whose fault is it that this guy's born blind? Was it his mother or his father? Jesus said, neither. That He says, but that I may work the works of God. And then you see the glory of God. He proceeds on down to the scripture and and, and, he, and he then takes this man on the Sabbath day. And there was a law that said no work should be done on the Sabbath. One guy went to pick up sticks and they stoned him because he worked on the Sabbath. And so they were trying to say that you can't even do miracles either. And so we pick up at verse 14. Now watch the context, the atmosphere and all this stuff. Now, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay. And he opened his eyes. So Jesus makes clay, puts it on his eyes. Man had never seen before, was born blind. Verse 15. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes. I washed and I do see. Right? All right, now watch this. Next verse. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. So they're living under the law. And to them, they were like, this guy just broke the law. He says, others said, how can a man that is a sinner, so they're just now they're concluding he's a sinner. How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? Let me put it like this. They were also saying, how can a man who's an unbeliever do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Because you're not a sinner because you sin. <laughs> that's a whole new sermon, but it's you're a sinner because of the old man that's on the inside of you. When you got born again, you got rid of the old man. You got a new creation, and the new creation will give you new fruit. But you still sin even with the new creation because you're still trying to renew your mind. Does that make sense to everybody? Uh, now, watch this. Verse 17. They say unto the blind man, so they're talking to the blind man again, who's no longer blind, what sayest thou of him? That he hath opened thine eyes? And he said, is he a prophet? <laughs> Verse 18. <laughs> but the Jews did not believe concerning him. That's the problem. That he had been blind. They didn't believe the blind man was blind. And, and that he received his sight. Until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. So they said, we don't believe you. We're going to call your mom and dad. All right, next verse. And they asked them, saying, is this your son? 
who you say was born blind, how then doth he now see? Next verse. His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son, and we know that he was born blind. Next verse. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who has opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. <laughs> shall speak for himself. Next verse. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Now watch this. <laughs> Therefore said his parents, he's of age. <laughs> Ask him. Next. Then again called they he the man that was blind. Now how many of you know he about, he about getting ready to trip a little bit? How many times y'all gonna ask me? Alright, look at the setting. You gonna ask me same, I'm gonna ask you the same way. Now what is it? And he said to my, and he said unto him, Give God the praise. So he's telling the blind man who's no one was blind, give God the praise. Now watch this. We know that this man is a sinner. That's a real weird contradiction. On one hand, give him a praise. On the other hand, he's a sinner. By your own tradition, you know that God doesn't do miracles through sinners or through unbelievers. And yet you say, give him the praise for my blind, my, my, me no longer being blind, but then he's a sinner. All right, watch this. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know is that whereas I was blind, now I see. So I don't know about all that tough you foolery y'all talking about. I don't know nothing about all that. You know, is he a sinner? Is he a believer? Who's supposed to do what? How are they supposed to do? I don't know. No, I don't go to church. <laughs> this church folks drummer right here. I don't go to church. All I know is I was blind and now I can see. That's how you're going to win the world. I don't go to church. But I Christian love me. They stopped and talked to me. They ministered to me. 26. Then said they to him again. What did he? Again. They talk again. <laughs> what did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? <laughs> you, you, you getting the context here? He about to get on this boy's last, last nerve. 27, he answered them, I done already told you. <laughs> okay. I have already told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore, would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciple if, if I tell you again? 28, watch religion come out. They reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple? <laughs> but we are Moses' disciples. Uh-huh. We know the problem. You under the law. You're being governed by the law. And what just happened to me is greater than what's going on with your law. Verse 29. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, <laughs> we know not from whence he is. Now they should have, because the law prophesies about this fella coming. Verse 30. The man answered and said unto them. Did I, did I, did I read 29? Okay. Uh, the man answered and said unto them. Why herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is. And yet he's opened my eyes. How in the world? You don't know the guy who opened my eyes and did something that ain't never been done before. Now watch him. He's now getting ready to reprimand them. Um, next verse. Now he's getting ready to reprimand them. Now we know. 
according to your traditions, I think the Amplified says, according to your own traditions, we know that God heareth not sinners or that God doesn't do miracles through unbelievers. But if any man be a worshiper of God and of his will, him he heareth. He says, you know that on your own tradition. Look at verse 32. This is awesome. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? Verse 33. Watch this. Watch this. If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Mm -hmm. And it goes on now saying, he says, and I'm amazed that you don't know him. All right, now, go back to verse 31. Tell me what verse 31 got to do with prayer. It didn't say nothing. It didn't say we know that God heareth not the sinner's prayer. Nothing had to do with prayer. Everything had to do with how can miracles work through an unbeliever or a sinner. By your own traditions, you know that miracles can't work through unbelievers. And yet, my eyes have been opened. So you should know this guy. And yet, they took one verse out of context, turned it into a prayer scripture, and told everybody with condemnation and fear, you better get saved because God does not hear the prayer of a sinner. And that ain't even what that verse means. And right, I want this. Imagine the number of scriptures that have been butchered like this one. And the religion that has been created from scripture that hadn't been rightly divided. Imagine the stuff that's in your head that your grandmama got and your mama and them got, Pookie and them got, and they believed it because the preacher said it. And they didn't know nothing else, and they've been carrying that wrong interpretation around for years. And yet you didn't know nothing about it. And you've been carrying it around for years. And then we judge people the very same way that they judge people because we have missed out on what this thing is supposed to be about. So now God raises me up and others and we're trying to unravel this stuff but you're calling right wrong and wrong right. Women ain't got nothing. Women ain't got no business being in the pulpit. Correct. Under the old covenant. But under the new covenant Jesus showed up so that male and female can stand on equal grounds.